This body of work on climate refugees was really a byproduct. Um, we've been working on a long-term story on the river Brahmaputra, uh, an enormous river that goes from Tibet through to in, across India into Bangladesh and to the Bay of Bengal. While we were doing that, um, at various stages of the river, we came across erosion and what it meant to people, how it displaced people. Uh, and the bulk of the work that's been shown is from an island called Nijumdi, which literally translates into the island of silence. It's one of the most remote islands in the Bay of Bengal, um, and um, an island that is very vulnerable for various reasons. Uh, it had also been ravaged by a recent cyclone. Uh, and when we arrived, we came across people who'd set up temporary homes, having been initially washed away from their homes because of erosion, then their homes having been destroyed because of the cyclone, and then facing yet another cyclone. Um, and that's when it occurred to me that while we deal with statistics, with figures, we don't always remember the human consequences, uh, the people themselves. And we spent uh, a lot of time uh, talking about very personal things that had affected these people, what their land meant to them, what their homes meant to them, what the consequences of displacement were. Um, and that was really how the work grew. Um, you see work from various parts of Bangladesh, but uh, uh, in some ways they're all connected. The latter part um, also has to do with some work I was doing for the New York Times when uh, people who'd been migrants were coming back after the invasion of Libya. And I was surprised to find that, perhaps I shouldn't have been surprised, I was surprised to find that many of the people who'd gone over to Libya had not simply gone because of economic reasons in the first place. It was the cyclone Isla which ravaged their homes, which meant they had very little options left. And they took this as one option that was open to them. More recently, we've been working on migration here. And after I started the work, of course, the story about the boat people blew up. It's not a new story. It's just blowing up that is new. Um, and there again, I came across how people who were vulnerable to start with were the ones most exposed when climate change affected their lives. Uh, and a large number of the people who end up in those boats crossing the sea do so because they feel they have no option left. One of my key concerns, both as an artist and a journalist and an activist, um, when trying to tell stories of the subaltern, is that their stories almost invariably get reduced to numbers. Um, statistics are how we describe them. Um, figures, reports, um, are how they're depicted. Very rarely are they personal stories. Very rarely do they talk about individual human beings, their passions, their beliefs, their emotions. Uh, what you will see in this exhibition are a series of photographs. But what I've done is a series of in-depth interviews where uh, their voice comes through, where their concerns come through, where they exist as individuals and we hear not only um, of their plight but also their histories, their hopes, their ambitions. Uh, and while within this show not all of that is available for the public, I think it will create enough of an interest for people to delve into the real lives of real people. And at the end of the day, unless we make that connection, unless we see them as part of 
this bigger humanity that we ourselves are part of. They will always be the other and their plight will be relegated to the back pages. The belief in social justice is what has driven Thrik all the way through. It is what gave rise to the organization in the first place and is the reason why I do what I do. Um, of course, it eventually comes back to people. Um, migration in a Bangladeshi context is particularly important because um, we live in a very divided society. I myself am um, from a relatively privileged background, I'm middle class, um, educated, I have connections. Most of my siblings, my cousins, the people around me have had the best this country has had to offer. And these are the very people who've left home, gone abroad for want of a better life and have served other countries who've invested nothing in them and given back very little to the country they were from. The migrants I'm talking about uh, are exactly the opposite. They have had the least that this country has been able to offer. They've taken great risks to go out and work, sent back almost everything they could earn. And they have actually bolstered this economy of ours that the privileged few um, benefit from. Yet, the story of those migrants is very rarely told. They are treated as second-class citizens in my own country. Uh, we have an attitude towards them that despicable. I found it very important to tell those stories and I am right now working on a bigger story on migration involving Malaysia and Bangladesh, and of course, the boat people in between. That climate change was so integral to this is not something I've been completely aware of, um, but gradually became more and more um, tuned to as I went along. But it struck me, uh, and at one stage I'd done an interview of a young man in Paris and he said something that really struck me. He says, yes, I'm here. I save money, I send money back home. Maybe my sister will get married. My dad will buy a plot of land. Maybe the shop we sold off to pay for my travel here will be bought again. But I'm giving away the finest years of my youth. Who will ever give that back to me? And we forget often the price that is paid by these migrants for us to live the life we do. Being part of this exhibition um, is quite exciting for me. Uh, one of my concerns has been that photography, at least where I work, has really isolated itself and been isolated. Uh, it doesn't engage with other art forms in the same way. It's in other ways quite elitist. It doesn't engage with the wider public and doesn't benefit uh, from the cross-pollination that takes place when diverse artists with diverse points of view have things to add. Um, this is a wonderfully eclectic show with people from various parts of the globe with different art practices being combined. More importantly, I think it is important that these individual acts of resistance be seen as part of a much wider movement towards social equality um, and that we begin to work collectively because these issues are not unique to Bangladesh. I mean, they will be present in different forms in different reincarnations in different places. But at the end of the day, it's this human fabric and the vulnerability of some of us that is what this story is about. And I think a show such as this begins to make those connections. Uh, it creates the wider web within which we're enmeshed. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not physically being part of the show. I would love to have been, but I hope um, that we get a chance to bring this show to Bangladesh.
and that the people I'm telling these stories about also begin to see or get a chance to see that the world really cares and that they're not alone.